Well, these fragments are believed to belong to a giant fireball that landed in the ocean off the coast of Manus Island in Papua New Guinea in 2014. And no one thought too much of it at the time, but last year the US Space Command confirmed that it was actually an interstellar meteor, meaning that it had come from outside our solar system. And um, while there have been a few other interstellar meteors that have landed on Earth, this is the earliest one that we know about. And so there was a lot of eagerness to go and recover these materials and study them, which is what this team of researchers from Harvard University have done. So, Marion, how did they actually go about finding them firstly and then identifying them? So they actually went to the site in PNG where the meteor is believed to have landed and they used a magnetic sled to excavate debris from the ocean floor. Now, I spoke with Professor Avi Loeb, who's the lead scientist on this expedition, and he said at first all they sort of found was volcanic ash. We just didn't know that they might be there until we used the mesh and filtered out all the volcanic ash, the tiny particles, and were left with particles bigger than the mesh size, which was a quarter of a millimeter. And then we put those particles under the microscope. And lo and behold, we found the first spiral. And that was a thrilling moment. I hugged the people around me when we found it, because I realized from my experience in the kitchen that if I see an ant, I know there must be many more ants out there. And sure enough, we found many spherules within hours, and altogether um, more than 50 of them in the sample that we brought back. So the Harvard team is now working on analysing and identifying these spherules to see if they are indeed from outside our solar system. Indeed. But at the same time, uh, there's a bit of a spanner in the works because it seems that the scientists didn't have the right permits to go about this kind of research. Yes, that's correct. So concerns have been raised by the PNG National Research Institute who say they didn't receive an application from this group to actually conduct the research. In fact, the first they learnt about it was when reading um, about this expedition in the media. And the NRI is listed as the overarching body responsible for uh, approving all research visas in Papua New Guinea. Now, when I spoke to the expedition coordinator, Rob McCallum, he told me that the team had been engaged with the PNG government for eight months leading up to this uh, expedition and they were advised to apply for what's called a marine science research permit. Now I understand that the group did uh, lodge multiple applications for this type of permit, none of which were approved at the time that they actually went into Papua New Guinea on business visas and conducted this study. And Rob McCallum said that the unique nature of the research, the fact that they were um, researching or looking at interstellar material um, raised some problems in the application process. The forms that, that they were given to fill out didn't quite fit what they were working with. But when I asked why they didn't just wait for the bureaucratic issues to be resolved, um, they didn't really have an answer. And so it's not, not a good look for this team and it certainly uh, raised some concerns in PNG. And also confirm uh, concerns from Manus Island. They've weighed in. What have they had to say? So authorities on Manus Island say they also weren't aware of this research. The common protocol in Papua New Guinea is for anyone visiting a province for business or research purposes to pay a courtesy visit to the local author a provincial authority just to let them know that they're there and what they're doing and how long they'll be there. That didn't happen in this case. Um, the research area was technically outside Manus provincial waters, but the last port of call was Manus Island. So the locals have have um, raised some concerns about the lack of consultation there. Um, one other thing that is important to note is that the Harvard team does have a partnership agreement with the University of Technology in PNG, and that university has been very supportive of the project. Interesting. Now, when you spoke to Professor Arby Loeb, he made some quite bold statements. What uh, has he had to say about what this could all mean? 
Well, Professor Loeb has um, posited some theories about what this material could be or what this um, interstellar meteor could have been, um, saying that it may uh, be an, um, fragments from an alien spacecraft, and he's based that theory around um, uh, how fast it was travelling um, when it came to Earth. But it's a very bold claim and, and one that has understandably sparked a lot of excitement, but other scientists have been quick to caution against such statements saying they could give rise to disinformation and the key thing here is that there just isn't uh, enough compelling evidence to suggest that this is the case that these fragments could belong to an alien spacecraft so to speak um there's still a lot of detailed analysis to be done on um, these materials. So, um, yeah, jumping to any conclusions, it's probably a little bit of a long bow to draw. And this isn't the first time that Professor Loeb has made such claims. He's, he's made similar statements in the past and attracted a bit of controversy around those. Um, another point to note is that Co cosmic spherules, similar to the ones that have been discovered, um, have actually been found before. So perhaps um, no nothing to get too excited about <laughs> just yet. No aliens invading just yet. So what happens from here? Are they going to continue their research? What is PNG likely to do? Yeah, so as I mentioned, um, the the researchers are now conducting a detailed analysis of these materials that they've collected. They've got three laboratories involved in undertaking that research, but they do want to go back to Papua New Guinea and back to the site to actually find larger fragments, larger pieces from this meteor, um, and that's work they hope to do in the future. Now, whether or not they'll be allowed back into PNG um, is, is yet to be seen. Uh, the PNG government and PNG authorities so far haven't um, indicated that they'll be taking any sort of action against the scientists and there's no um, suggestion that anything they did was illegal. Um, but, yeah, whether whether or not they're able to go back will, will be an interesting question to see in the future. Um, certainly it has caused a bit of concern within some parts of PNG. Yeah, well, we'll watch with interest. Good to talk, Marion. Thanks so much. Thanks, Bev.